Mr. Sonali. Thank you all for carving out some time for attending today's webinar on the episode 10 of the Business X Learning Series, Invest, Scale and Value. To all the attendees out there, please type in any questions you might have in the Q&A section and we'll try to answer as many as possible at the end of the session. I would now like to welcome our speaker, Mr. Gaurav Madhya, Chairman and Founder of the Franchise India Group. A very warm welcome to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Sonali. And welcome, friends, and welcome to the 10th edition, as Sonali said. Uh, this is a platform uh, powered by Business X. Uh, Business X uh, is a company which we started about uh, five years back, which was the intention was that we can help, uh, you know, uh, startups to get funding. A lot of uh, even scale ups, which are at next level, they also need uh, sophisticated capital. And also a lot of companies which are now looking to sell their businesses. Uh, this platform also does that. So we have a bit largest uh, resale platform in the country where if you want to value your business and sell the business, and currently that side, sell side is becoming more and more uh, in place and, and rather the buy side is becoming a little bit of a problem. So today, uh, you know, as we do every time we take up one topic, we do invest, scale and value. Uh, today is invest, it's the 10th edition. And I'm going to talk about something which we are getting a lot uh, these days on our, our messages and mails and communication, especially on our platforms. Uh, there is a there is a big of problem going on in the in the startup ecosystem now the problem is that a lot of startups which were waiting to get they've been capitalized uh, during uh, you know these last two three quarters have not got the capital right which means that this is a time where a lot of things are changing uh, you know people are not investing further and i'll give you some statistics which i've got and to set the perspective of uh, today's discussion today's discussion is more about understanding the, the investment space uh, post this COVID and COVID looks like not ending. You know, we have done a lot of webinars. When we started doing webinars in April, we were talking a different language. And then we came into June, we were talking in a different language. And now we are in, in September, uh, there is a different because it's prolonged. It's prolonged and it is, it looks like that it is not ending soon, which means that uh, the things would, what the way we were predicting and the way people were talking about that, how do you sustain yourself in three to four months, five months? This is not the reality. Reality is something else. This is much, much deeper than what anybody would have thought. So we need to really set some perspective of what is going on and how, what, what we are doing, and especially at Franchise India and Business X, how we are advising companies, what kind of companies we're now reaching out to really help them out. Because at this stage, I, I, I tell my team, it's better to say no than say yes, because a very little you can do uh, for a lot of companies. So, so this is a very, very uh, delicate times. You need to really, one has to go very deep into understanding businesses and their performances and so on and so forth. So let's talk about what is happening. 30% of uh, startups, uh, I feel, face a danger of winding up. You know, so that's a starting point, 30%. And this number might go drastically high if this is prolonged for another three to four months. Uh, because I feel that the kind of uh, reserves, cash flows, uh, capabilities, uh, early stage startups have, uh, they would not be doing that. And I'm really surprised at this stage why nobody is really talking about it? Nobody is doing it because we are we are we have an ecosystem. We understand what is going on. The kind of uh, uh, desperation I'm seeing from startups these days on their on their potential winding up structures, uh, and especially in the cases and the industries where they are deeply impacted, right? Uh, deeply impacted industries. Uh, this is this is very tough period because they they can go into potential litigation. They can into potential uh, issues with their uh, shareholders and other uh, investors. So a lot of that is going on. Uh, and I think my advice to mature investors is uh, at this is a time to stand by. This is a time to stand by startups and help them in terms of passing this phase because this is a very delicate phase and this is where they need help. 50% uh, overall drop in funding. 50% uh, uh, by value terms is a global number. Uh, India number uh, would be different, but it's going to be around that 50%. Uh, there would be also because I feel that the, there would be multiple delays in exits. Uh, we're not seeing too many exits going to come sooner, uh, which means that the liquidity also would become problem with at least structured investors. A lot of active investors, which were there in the market, especially in the angel community, there was large communities being built over the last 10, 12 years, and they were actively investing. I think they would not be doing so much. And I can, I can see about 40% of active investors would want to pause or consolidate their portfolios before they start investing further because of uh, exits would not come. Uh, so fundamentally, the liquidity would become problem and people would not expose more in the market. 
and uh, a lot of other shift is also happening because i feel that people are not so much interested in the early stage startups which are commercially going to prove themselves they're moving into more scale ups where they already commercial proof uh, proof of concept is done business is already floating and they want to really scale up so a lot of these changes are are coming in and if you are an investor how do you really behave we are talking what we're going to talk about today that and if you are a startup uh, how you need to really position and do uh, your your uh, you know uh, justify your stand and how do you really sustain in these periods we are going to talk about this but i i reached out to a lot of uh, you know investors and and i've been reading a lot in these days and trying to understand and and fundamentally i've tried to see that what is the four uh, major points and i call the four c's uh, which would differentiate between what i call the weak and the strong startups uh, and i'm not only about talking about startups because i feel that even other businesses i mean uh, even businesses which are running would clearly be defined into the weak and the strong right and and the weak businesses would face a lot of issues and the stronger ones would still uh, survive at least sustain with a lot of changes coming through but they would still survive and come out and and maybe look at a new growth cycles as they come to entirely the four c's are to me is first is competence uh, how competent the the team is how competent i'm not talking about the business model the business model uh, might change and do and i think it's about competence of the team and a lot of businesses which would be able to survive in this period is purely on on the competence of the team uh, and 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 i my advice to startups is that uh, you need to really go out and find and and hold your people right so it's a, it's a very important at this stage a good competent team would be able to pass through this uh, structure second is collaboration this is a time where uh, you cannot create everything yourself rather you need to let go a lot of cost sides uh, in your system and start focusing on on areas which you can collaborate a lot of startups can collaborate with startups right and that's something which is which i think should be you should rather reaching out all the day in the investors reach out to your own community of startups and try to collaborate with them collaborate with even your potential competition uh, uh, you know anybody who's who's there if you can collaborate at this stage that would make a lot of sense compassion compassion uh, is the way it needs to be done which means that you need to really be uh, compassionate about your stakeholders internal and external consumers vendors suppliers everybody uh, and there is a broken broken element everywhere there is a broken element almost everywhere the only thing which can really take it uh, and i think and finally is fourth is character how do you really demonstrate a character at this stage so four c's before even we start about this is competence collaboration compassion and character which is very important now let's talk about some trends you know which very clearly uh, are coming out of uh, the whole ecosystem of uh, uh, you know uh, startups and i will to pick this uh, uh, 12 odd trends which i would say should be there and looked at first uh, is a buying behavior you know the lot is talked about uh, in the buying behavior of consumers how they would behave and continue to behave and some i think are temporary behavior changes and some are permanent behavior changes and if your business is passing through these temporary and permanent and how you are addressing that that's very important and how how fast you are able to adapt that temporary and permanent changes is very important the second point is a uh, change of markets you know so focus has to quickly change you know so you might have and you need to be dynamic and see where are the pockets of opportunity available in the markets and which are the markets into i'm be working with companies which are actually not very focused these days on uh, you know main cities they're not focused on they historically were metros but now they're putting focus on uh, so, you know b and c cities where they see the still consumption is going because franchise in the works with a lot of retail kind of companies uh, brick and mortar retail and we are getting a good traction in the in the tier 3 and tier 4 uh, market where things are pretty normal in that sense i mean i would not say completely normal but at least uh, the local consumption is helping them a lot of agriculture money is helping them a lot of other uh, money is helping them so people are changing quickly the markets and how do you really adopt your markets uh, like we we just doing with one of the hosiery companies out of calcutta very large company and we just put entire focus on certain pieces in south markets we go into micro market planning and said let's go and and put our adaptation and take the business there because this market is not been captured so that might give you additional uh, you know whatever loss you're getting from a certain uh, markets where you had absolutely reach out to your what i call the uh, peak market share uh, if you open up new markets that might help you uh, a tech adaptation is the fastest change which has happened so how business has adapted to technology and how consumers have actually faster than uh, even the companies have adapted to technology that some changes is, is very important 
another thing which is going to be happening which is a good side and people have to be very conscious and finding out answers around it i think a lot of regulations would change a lot of businesses and a lot of businesses which were restricted practices uh, i think would open up faster now because of compulsion like for example like i feel that there's a startup which has approached me in in a uh, on, online liquor uh, uh, delivery platform right so while it's very restricted it's a state subject but everybody is talking about it everybody is talking about it i am sure somebody would regulate it and there would be a new market which would come it's a billions of dollars uh, which can do it's no brainer that if the liquor gets online and it becomes in that thing almost everybody from amazon to everybody would like to take that pie of that that size so there would be a lot of these independent one has to be very closely seeing what are the changes coming in the regulation because in these times uh, the government especially in india which cannot really come up with with financial packages or assistance and so on so forth always would give relief from regulations the all the regulations would change so regulations would give comfort and these comforts would create new opportunities for people so one has to really see what is going to change in this what 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 is advice and even if you can correctly uh, through industry lobbies reach out to those changes and any changes which can give your business to be and i think that i think would be very important uh, another thing which is uh, the fifth point is that scale up with a limited burn you know if you you were on a high burn kind of a structure how do you pivot the model and see that you don't burn so much and other i think if you can save that burn uh, that would be very important two to three years of sustenance to me uh, if you're really going to an investor and you can demonstrate that look i my business is ready for two to three four years of sustenance and even if i don't get then round a c e series a or or b or whatever the stage you are in you can still sustain the business uh, as a investor i will like you I, i i can clearly see because people now don't want to see six months one year they want to really see two to three years because this can be very very deep in that sense <clears throat> stabilizing your own cash flows uh, so that you don't have get into a burn not beyond six months so if you're a new investor if you're going to a, a pitching uh, and i think or even your investor or a startup or a Uh, uh you know any stage if you can demonstrate to your as a startup you can demonstrate to your investor that you have very clear vision and clear demonstrate uh, structure that you can stabilize your cash flows in 6 months i think there would be a case for investment uh you know riding on stable distribution this is my seventh point rather than creating uh, it's eight points which is uh, not rather than creating your own distribution i see a lot of startups and early stage companies have a very uh you know uh, big lead time in terms of their go to market and hence they put a lot of burn in that right if you look at how zomato was built zomato hired 500 people these 500 people used to go in the market uh, to approach the rest, uh, restaurant owners take the database upload the database the cycle took at least 3 to 4 years of strong burn to build a ecosystem of and and the database and aggregation of these uh, restaurant these cycles are very very long and this this creates a lot of cash burn uh, before you really even want make a meaningful business model i mean their business model initially was a rating and they changed the business model to home delivery company now but it all happened because they had this database now the truth is uh, how do you really can do this uh, much faster right how do you can ride on somebody's distribution and and enable to do that innovation this the ninth point is innovation and which it should be system driven if you have to always think through and put up a strategy and say how what innovation my business should do and it is not system driven then it also it will have some breaks uh, 10th is a uh, very very leaner teams extremely lean teams uh, big teams i know a lot of startups and a lot of businesses uh, which were doing extremely well i know the big teams were a big shocker now because the kind of balance sheet they had and the kind of pressure they had and kind of a disruption it causes with laying off people and changing that thing and then getting the act back is very very difficult it, it it is it is very very i i know companies which are running 3000 5000 people are at this stage on a fire fighting mode because they on one side their financial teams are laying off they they want to lay off a lot of people another side the operations is disrupted because people when they laid off they, they there is no handovers there is no structure so there is a lot of challenges which start coming in the business and their smooth operations a localization is another opportunity which has been thrown to us you know i feel that now this every day we hear this one app is been banned and this is banned and that is banned and this is uh, been uh, one driven from system which is our uh, administration but also it is happening from a consumer mind view point i think this creates a new opportunity for indian entrepreneurs to really look at some of the localization of that thing 
Another area which I would strongly look at is uh, there is a broken supply chain today. Everything is broken because the global supply chain is broken, especially in some categories. If you can find opportunities in this broken supply chain, where is where are the opportunities? Say pharma is doing well, but pharma's supply chain was broken in some sense. You know, is there an opportunity to create something to fill that gap? So anything which which comes from these twelve different points or all of them uh, would be very interesting to look at from a uh, investor viewpoint. Another thing which is uh, which uh, I would say is that at this stage, a lot of uh, people who are looking for funding, especially startups. Uh, should not look at just conventional people out there. You should widen it up. Uh, like we are seeing uh, in franchise in the ecosystem, we have about 2 million odd investors. And uh, when we're talking to these investors, they were earlier coming to us for buying a franchise. Now they don't mind even investing into companies uh, because they see that they want to be part of the value creation uh, because they, they want to participate. So a lot of new set of investors, I feel, would come. And that's why we're seeing uh, better results. I mean, we, it's like a way we used to present a pitch deck to so conventional investors. They are not picking it so much, but when we go into, so to say, retail investors, people who are buying businesses or had, uh, you know, uh, interest to start a new business and giving them that, look, you can also participate in investing into a company. They are actually more adaptive. They are much more accepting that rather for a few of the deals have come from only from that side. So we are now going and widen up our investor base. Uh, we're going to much larger people. So if people say you are a sort of senior government officer and you wanted to invest for uh, entire thing. So their money is not gone anywhere. So they are still investing. So a lot of these new investors are coming in while they take a lot of time because they don't know so much uh, about the businesses and industry. But a new set of investors are coming in the market. Uh, and that's what Franchise India and Business X is doing. Franchising is also becoming very interesting. So Franchising is our, our uh, main subject. So we are working with a lot of startups in helping them use franchising as a way to continue to grow and also get their cash flows in the system. So a lot of startups have come at in last about 30 odd startups have come and approached us and we started working with them in from, I think, April to now. And these are in uh, e-vehicles, uh, e-mobility. -e -e they are in uh, a lot of these uh, services. A lot of edutech companies have come in. So these companies have come and chosen franchising as a way to uh, continue to scale their business and continue to get a lot of cash flows because franchising is, is the best example for scaling up uh, without putting your own capital. The third advice I would have for companies which have uh, probably not getting the first two. So if you're not getting investors, you're not even using franchising as a way to get uh, you know your market share grow or your business continue to grow then I feel tell you should also look at an exit. Uh, look at an exit. Uh, don't wait for it because exit is also never bad because if you drag too much and you wave, uh, wait for the next wave to come, uh, you might uh, spoil the business itself, right? Whatever stage you are, if you don't clearly see that you will be able to secure funding and your funding requirement is less than 90 days from a run viewpoint and, and, then, and you don't see that happening very soon, you're not in active discussions, then I think this is a time where you need to really see. Even if you want to plan your exit, this also is a 90 to 180 day cycle. Uh, or if you have ability to pause, then pause, which means that just don't burn further, stop where you are, uh, continue to keep the, the assets uh, uh, there and open when the business is coming back and you can handle that business in that. Thing. So either of these strategies, one can really use it. But if you really feel that uh, uh, there is a, there is a, you know, a potential erosion which can happen in two to three, four months. Don't shy away, open it up and look at exit. And Business X is uh, helping a lot of these startups to come to us and businesses to come to us, which don't feel that they, they can survive beyond that. And we can look at some buyers to come in. Now, from a timing viewpoint, I personally feel that it's a good time to invest. Uh, you know, while it depends on the investor, how, how much liquidity is sitting on. But if you have liquidity and you have some spare liquidity, this is a great time to invest uh, because valuations are absolutely right. Uh, there, there are great companies, great opportunities, and opportunities which have also very clearly defined themselves and, and changed the models which are much more adaptable to the entire thing. And there are a lot available in the market today. Uh, rather, I always say that disruption and opportunity go hand in hand. There's never a time where there would be uh, these two not together. So any op uh, disruption which happens creates some pockets of opportunities and these opportunities are so great 
uh, that if you really pride on them in this end negative wave, you can really go into a much bigger scale. Uh, current crisis, I think, has uh, one thing very clear, and I've been talking about this for a very long period. And I say I would like to invest into startups which which have a profitable sales structure. You know, I don't like startups which have a, a loss-making sales cycles. You know, so they sell, but they make every single sales they make they make a loss, uh, right? So that's something which which was out of my mind. You know, uh, and and now I think the time has come for startups or businesses which have a very profitable sales cycles. If you have a profitable sales cycles, I think the good investors would like to get into that. Rather, I think we should have a mindset that we should find a, prof, uh, you know, we should have an opportunity to profitably help others in solving their problems. That's where they, every time when I ask also, what is, what are you bringing? What are you solving? So everybody tries to solve a problem, but they're not profitably solving the problem. And that's something which we are able to do. Then I think we are much better. Another area which one has to really look at is how do you lock talent? And you can unlock your more equity if you feel that you cannot currently run paychecks and give big salaries. You cannot have your your uh, top team staying with you for kind of salary. Unlock your equity. There is not a problem. I think reach out to your investors and tell them that look, I want to uh, uh, unlock some equity to retain teams and make them co-founders, expand your founder base. Uh, that's also another thing. Last in this uh, part is uh, look at strategic investors rather than financial. Uh, I feel that strategic investors are going to be very, very good because they bring in much more than money, right? Much more than money to really take the businesses to the next level or support their businesses. Hey, you, you, you have something which needs a next distribution and somebody already has that distribution. Reach out to them, reach out to uh, these companies. So we are working a lot on that side. We are, we are getting people who come to us and say, look, I run a cosmetic brand and I want to really go to somebody who's already having a cosmetic distribution and, and maybe take a better part. So something of that nature is very important because if you are not, if you're just looking at a financial investor, uh, maybe the, there would be a lot of disappointment. Uh, we're seeing almost about a hundred applicants, hundred, uh, you know, uh, uh, pitch. We would take it to investors. Uh, they are not picking up. They are not picking because they were not interested. It's just about it's a it's a mindset issue. It's a it's a lot of liquidity issue, consolidation. Uh, you know, uh, companies have not got their the investors have not got their exit. So a lot of those challenges are creating a big problem. And uh, now I'll give you areas which uh, I have big, uh, uh, in, uh, you know, interest on because we've just about four or five minutes left for our session. Uh, I would I would look at some of the categories which uh, to me would be very interesting. While everybody talks about the new age businesses, which I will also mention, but I have a particular big focus on FMCG, uh, fast moving goods. I feel that FMCG, any kind of uh, fast moving products. Uh, uh, you know, it can be a packaged water to, uh, uh, you know, and I think this would get a very strong reaction. So like yesterday, I was with the, uh, you know, one of the startups which we are working very closely with and helping them is a, is a beer company, Medusa as a beer, is a young guy who was an architect who started a beer company and, and uh, took this business to entire thing. So I will put a top dollar behind him. These kind of uh, companies are great companies because uh, it's a consumption economy. We have more people than anywhere in the world. And, and if you have that, if you create any kind of uh, products like that, you know, compelling products and, and with, with the distribution becoming more organized, uh, structure becoming organized, uh, you can build a great impact. You can create an Indian Mithai brand and then can become a bigger opportunity. It can be anything. You can make thousand crore businesses out of that. I mean, like there is a, a snack company which has come in and uh, been very, very useful. Uh, the Nachos uh, uh, brand, I don't know, I don't remember the brand, but has become a very big scalable business. So I would put a lot of, uh, uh, you know, emphasis on FMCG, fast moving goods uh, kind of opportunity. Obviously, Edutech is very close to us. Uh, today we are doing a lot of work in Edutech uh, because I think franchising works very well in that. Uh, digital entertainment gaming, while well, I've not done too much of work on that, uh, but I can clearly see India can have an advantage, but not much has been done here in India. Uh, uh, E-healthcare, I think that's another area which we are strongly uh, working on. Uh, overall, I think the life sciences, pharmaceuticals, these are kind of uh, areas would always be important. Uh, mobility uh, would be a very, a very, very, very interesting space. So a lot of uh, work we're doing in, in integration of O2O products, uh, which is online to offline kind of uh, companies is doing this a fabulous company, which is into online furniture, customized furniture uh, businesses. They opened stores, which 
are actually not having physical furniture, but they just have displays where they would capture your demand and the, everything is automized and, and you get your uh, products customized for your home, uh, delivered to your home. Uh, so these are kind of concepts which we are uh, very, very bullish on to work with. So if you have anything which, uh, you know, you have a startup or you have a particular interest to invest into a startup which you are looking at as a category, you should reach out to us and we will be more than happy to help you out. Even if you have a brand which you feel that has an interesting idea which can be scaled through franchising, that also we can really uh, help you. So I'm, I'm more than happy to now take a few questions. I've already done about uh, 29 minutes. We can run for two, three minutes more and take some questions and then uh, Sonali, over to you, please. Thank you so much for another wonderful session, sir, and for sharing your great insights. We have quite a few questions lined up with us. So the first question I would like to take is, uh, an attendee asks, is it smart to invest in companies which are going digital during this time, but how would we, uh, how would we know that they would be able to sustain when things go back to normal after COVID? Sure, uh, there's, again, this is a permanent change. This is a permanent change. Uh, uh, digital is not new. We were always digital. You know, the consumer adaptation was slow. Uh, so let's, let's be honest. Uh, there is nothing which has changed with COVID. Uh, you know, we were always digital. This digitalization started not now. It started 15 years back. So it's a very old story. Uh, it's a very old story. But adaptation was a slow cycle. And adaptation in India is a very slow cycle, right? Uh, we started building up shopping malls in late 90s. Uh, but adaptation to that shopping malls really came in the late and then, so India takes a lot of time in adaptation. I've been working on modernization of retail, uh, started working in, in 1999, where we said we will take these mom and pop shops and I think, I mean, we are talking right now also, so much is still left. You know, it's uh, 21 years and everybody from Kishore Bayani's to likes of them, everybody has come and now he's exited also. But in this cycle also the impact which is created is not even 20%, right? So it's 20% of India is still under this mom and pop operations and still not organized and, and that. So adaptation to anything in India takes a lot of time. And that's something which I think has been rather an opportunity in last four or five months. Look, I've, I've been using Zoom for now two and a half, two years or so. Uh, but the way I'm using Zoom now is much more, right? So my adaptation to this I used to do it, but only with my international clients when they wanted to come on a call, VC call or something like that, because that time I had no choice, but I never did it with my domestic companies. I never did it with my teams. Uh, we always used to have that. So my adaptation was always there, but it was not, the usage was very little. So now the usage is widened, right? And I think that would remain like that. It would, it would not change. Rather, uh, any company which doesn't have a digital viewpoint on businesses, I would not even touch it. Any business, you can be a classic old uh, business also. If you're not digitally uh, active, you not touch it. Uh, absolutely. I mean, people can talk about it. People can say, now the pharmacy uh, industry is fighting that, oh, people should not have a medicine at home by uh, e-commerce and why Reliance invested into uh, this new company, which they invested into, uh, which is a digital uh, pharmacy retail. Actually, truth, I mean, these are trade barriers. These are people who create trade barriers for consumer to not get value. I mean, this, they would have thought uh, much before. I mean, they would have thought 20 years back, this is eventually going to happen when e-commerce is coming for, for people to buy vegetables, to buy everything from uh, Amazon. Why not medicines? Medicine is much more needed. And there's 24 hour, hour product from a delivery viewpoint. I think the most compelling product, which government should say is 24 hour to be delivered is medicine because this is absolutely necessity. And uh, we have 24 hours of food delivery in India, but we don't have medicine delivery. So that's, that's, to me, a, a trade, you know, a restriction, all these restrictions would go away. I think this, you can take it from me in the next cycle of deregulization, all these industry related regulations would taken away because consumer would push it and new age businesses would push it and government would see a merit in that because they would know that this would create a new cycle of jobs because the, the need for government is understand the larger consumer base and understand job creation. Anybody can demonstrate these two things. They are only interested in that. They are not interested in if your business is affected for this or other businesses affected for that. That's not their call at this moment. Their call is very clearly who can help me create more jobs. So if business models can adapt that, then would be a, a good idea. Yeah. Wonderful. 
So the next question we have is from Mr. Rajesh Sethi. He is saying, "I seek your advice as how can investors make a decision to invest? Any leads you can advise and the role models? I am equally keen to review investments and brands as investors." Yeah, sure, Rajesh. I mean, depending on what is your interest area and how you look at, are you a regular investor? Uh, you have do you build a portfolio investing, or this is one-off investment you want to do? And if you have a some kind of strategic advantage, you know, I feel that if you are not a, you know, somebody who builds a portfolio, uh, then don't go too many investments. Just pick up one good pair where you can, you can bring what more than what you can bring outside money. If you if you ask yourself what is else I can bring on the table without outside money, if that answer is very clear to you, then pick up that kind of a company and invest into that company and work with the founder to create more value. That's the answer. Unless and until you are very, uh, you you build a portfolio. Like for me, I I would look at only investment if the company can be franchised. Because only thing I can bring in on business is franchise or licensing. These are two subjects I understand. And anything, any business which would not have these two, I would shy away from that investment. Right. Uh, the next question we have is: Is it fine to replace the founder of a company if the company idea in itself is very good? But it's not reaching its potential due to the inability of the founder in some way. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it, one, this is a, this is a very difficult fit, uh, situation, you know, where, where the business is good but the founder is not. Well, there's actually other way around. I've seen a lot. The founders are great, but the businesses sometimes the modeling is not done so well. But if that is a question and you are already invested uh, into businesses, uh, then this is happening all the time. This is happening. The, if you really see. What is happening globally is almost all founders have been replaced. Uh, the first era of founders are all there, and the second era of founders, which have came in like a WeWork founder or a or a you know Uber founder or uh, you know a lot of other founders, uh, uh, are been replaced because they, the businesses needed different leadership at that level, and investors on board thought this would be a better to do that, and uh, and sometimes it can be uh, you know. Uh, important to do that decision. I mean, I, I remember the decision when uh, Rahul Yadav, who used to found, who founded Housing.com, uh, created a big news and structure, and and he was taking the business absolutely. And there was a huge burn going on, wrong model, the wrong execution. While he was a golden boy, looked at in the market, everybody was talking and favoring him. But from an investor viewpoint, I know how much pain it is if you have a wrong founder. Who can drive the company to the wrong side, right? And and it, it 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 just can blow away your your everything, right? So you have to be very conscious. As I always say, there's no investment which is passive. There is only investment is active investment. You have to be active. You might not operate it, but you need to be an active investor. Absolutely, sir. I would just like to take up the last question now. The question is, uh, an edtech company approached me, and it is doing good. But there is already a flood of edtech companies, especially during this time. What are the points to keep in mind before I uh, decide to invest in? So edtech is a great space. It's very little penetration done at this moment. Uh, and I just for your information, uh, education online would also regulate, uh, and it would create a much bigger audience. Uh, but the, you you can actually get an online certificate. And and then apply for a job, uh, which currently is not a case. I mean, you, whatever you study, it's your self learning, but it doesn't give you any kind of certification which is recognized. Uh, but it's very very close. It's very very close. This is going to happen. This is again a trade restriction. People who put money in universities and people who put big campuses never like that. They would never like it because they even get shocked by the thought that people would not come to these campuses, right? Uh, so so but truth is. Uh, this is another disruption which would happen. It might take three years, four years, five years, but education uh, not so much in K-12 because K-12 is child development. They need to be environments where they are with other children and so on and so forth. But when it comes to other things, especially coaching, uh, test prep, things of that nature, I mean, you see the environments kids study there. They don't get a basic environment, but they go to these coaching centers where they're they're sitting on benches and. They're doing it. I think they they can work out of home. They can do a lot of uh, uh, environments, and and these tools would continue to rise. And I feel that uh, a regional uh, adaptation in education uh, ed tech would be a very big opportunity. If you regionalize, if you can take the opportunities to the Manipur's and the Guwahati's and the likes of them, and 
and regionalize uh, structures what kind of opportunity you are talking about what kind of opportunity you are talking about Uh, thank you so much, Gaurav sir. Thank you for be, uh, very patiently answering all the questions, and thank you once again for your time uh, for the series. Anything you would like to say in the end? So, Shilam, I think you, you're asking for a particular brand which you you are interested franchise in franchising is working. Uh, you can reach out to me. I'll check it. Uh, I think uh, uh, I will check out with my team. I, I don't remember off that they we, we work with the brand or no, but I can check it for you. There's no problem. So thank you very much. If you have an idea which you want to get uh, investment on, reach out to us. If you have an idea which can scale and franchising can be strategic, reach out to us. If you have a business which you want to exit, uh, then also reach out to us. Thank you very much. Thanks for your time. Thanks, Sonali, for organizing this. Thank you so much for your time, Gaurav sir. Thank you to all our attendees for. Uh, um, their participation in this webinar. We really hope you were able to add some value to your lives through the session. And we'll see you next Saturday with another session of the Business X Learning Series. The next session will be all about scaling up your business and strategies involved in the same. Thank you so much.